Minimal pairs are two words in a language that differ in only one phonological element. These words are used to show that the difference in pronunciation of a word has an impact on the meaning of the words and therefore is linguistically significant in the pronunciation. Today I want to take a look at a few of these pairs in German and use them to help you practice the small subtle differences in pronunciation that can often lead to miscommunications. Let's start with the pair of words that can really lead to some confusing sentences. Hölle and Hölle. One is a cave and the other one is hell. To complicate matters even more, there is a grim fairy tale called Frau Hölle, which is pretty close in pronunciation but bears no connection to these two words. You can hear the difference in the following examples. Frau Holle ist in der Höhle. Der Bär ist mit ihr in der Höhle. Mother Holde is in the cave. The bear is with her in the cave. Frau Holle ist in der Höhle. Der Teufel ist mit ihr in der Höhle. Mother Holde is in hell. The devil is with her in hell. The difference between these three words is very subtle, but it all has to do with the pronunciation of the first vowel. Without an umlaut and followed by two consonants, the German O requires the short pronunciation of O, Frau Holle. Simply add an umlaut to get the short O umlaut sound, O, in Hölle. The H after the O umlaut in Hölle requires us to use the long O umlaut sound, Ö, Hölle, 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 Hölle. There is a big difference between living in Hütte and living in a Hütte. The first is the plural form of the word Hut, the German word for hat. The second is the singular word for a small primitive dwelling usually made from locally sourced materials. In English, a hut. These two examples can help you to see the difference between these. Hast du meine Hütte gesehen? Ich kann sie nirgendwo finden. Have you seen my hats? I can't seem to find them anywhere. Hast du meine Hütte gesehen? Ich habe sie selbst gebaut. Have you seen my hut? I built it myself. In this pair we clearly see the difference between the pronunciation of a U umlaut with one consonant and with two consonants after it. When there is only one consonant, the U umlaut takes the long vowel sound Ü, Hütte. When there are two consonants, we use the short vowel sound Ö, Hütte. Hütte, 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 Hütte. A particularly confusing combination for me is Beit versus Bet. I don't have much of a problem with the pronunciation. The word bait is pronounced with a long e sound as the combination of the two e's in a row makes this happen. The word bet is pronounced with a short e as the two consonants after the vowel make this happen. My issue is with the meanings. Bait in German refers to an arrangement of plants that in English we call a garden bed. You could also use it as garten bait. Bet, on the other hand, is a big, soft, usually rectangular thing that you sleep in, called in English, a bed. This means that we have two words that are both translated with the English word bed. To make things even more confusing, if you add e to the end of bait, you end up with the German word for the red root plant that some people like to eat, called in English, a beet. Ich liege in meinem Bett und esse die Beete, die im Garten Beet gewachsen sind. I am lying in my bed and eating the beets which grew in the garden bed. If you mistakenly translate garden bed with the word garten bed, you end up with this. Ich darf nicht mehr im Haus schlafen. Ich schlafe im garten bed. I'm not allowed to sleep inside anymore. I am sleeping in the garden bed. This is a bed that I have in the garden. Short version, das Bett, somewhere to sleep. Das Beet, an arrangement of plants in a confined area. Die Beete, a vegetable. Two sounds that are very close together are G and K in German. This is because they are made with the same formation in your mouth. The only difference is that G has voice behind it and K does not. You can tell this if you simply put two fingers on your throat when you say the two sounds back to back. G, K, G, K, G, K. You can practice the difference with the minimal paar Gasse and Kasse and Grippe and Krippe. Eine Gasse is an alley. Eine Kasse is a cash register. Let's say that you named an alley after a cash register. This would be Kassengasse. If you open up a shop in the alley, you'll need a cash register in the alleyway. You could call this Gassenkasse. Ich arbeite an der Kasse in der Gasse. Das ist die Gassenkasse in der Kassengasse. I work at the cash register in the alley. This is the alley cash register in the cash register alley. Die Grippe is the flu. Die Krippe is a crib. K 
Krippe also refers to a daycare center. This means that if your child catches the flu while at a daycare center, you could call it the Krippengrippe. Mein Sohn steckt sich mit der Grippe in der Krippe an. My son caught the flu at the daycare center. Ach, diese Krippengrippen sind die schlimmsten. Oh, these daycare center flus are the worst. Up next we have a combination of Babia and Papia. A Babia is a barber. Papia is paper. Let's say you needed to borrow a piece of paper from the barber. This would be a Babia Papia. If this barber is made of paper and or trims the paper hairs on paper dolls, he would also be a Papia Babia. This gives us this fun little exchange. Ich brauche ein Blatt Papier. Fred, der Barbier, darf ich ein Blatt Papier von dir borgen? Natürlich darfst du ein Blatt Papier von mir borgen. Ich bin doch der Papier Barbier. Ich habe ein Blatt Barbier Papier hier. Of course you can borrow a piece of paper from me. I'm the paper barber after all. I have a piece of barber paper here. Ich danke dir, Fred, dem Papier Barbier, für das Blatt Barbier Papier. I thank you, Fred the Barber, for the piece of barber paper. Obviously, I kind of leaned into the ia part, but the main focus here is the difference between p and b. Similar to the difference between g and k. The p does not use your voice, but the b does. B, p, b, p, b, p. One of my favorite minima pa that I use often as examples in class is the combination of kirche and kirche. Certain German dialects will not have much of a difference at all between these two words. If you add in another minimal pa, Küche and Kuchen, you can have a lot of fun. Ich glaube nicht an Gott. Ich glaube an Kirchen. Deshalb gehe ich jeden Sonntag in die Kirchenkirche. Sie kochen dort wunderbare Kuchen aus Kirchen. Diese Kirchenkirche Kirschkuchen sind einfach herrlich. I don't believe in God. I believe in cherries. Therefore, every Sunday I go to the Cherry Church. They cook wonderful cakes from cherries there. These Cherry Church cherry cakes are simply superb. The difference between the short I sound I and the short U umlaut sound I is very subtle. Here to help you with the difference are the words Kiste and Küste. Heute Morgen habe ich eine Kiste an der Küste gefunden. Möchtest du meine neue Küstenkiste sehen? This morning I found a crate on the coast. Would you like to see my new coast crate? The difference between the long O and the short O in German can be illustrated with the words often and often. For example, Hast du den Ofen offen gelassen? Hier ist es ungemütlich warm. Ein offener Ofen macht die ganze Wohnung heiß. Did you leave the oven open? It is uncomfortably warm here. An open oven makes the entire apartment hot. I mentioned in my beginner German course that the A umlaut sound is often very close if not identical to the E sound in German. Where they differ, however, is the difference between the short E and the long A umlaut. For example, Schreck is a fear or fright. Schreck is skewed, slanted, or weird. For an added bonus, everyone's favorite ogre is Schreck, which is pretty close to Schreck, but not quite because it simply imitates the English pronunciation with German phonetics. Schreck findet es schräg, einen Schreck zu bekommen. Schreck finds it weird to receive a scare. Sometimes the diphthong or combination of vowels I and E can sound incredibly similar to the long U umlaut sound Ü. While they are close, they're not exactly the same. See if you can spot the differences between the words Tier and Tür in the following examples. Der Türmacher mag Tiere. Er installiert eine Tiertür damit das Tier durch die Tür kommen kann, ohne dass der Türmacher die Tür für das Tier öffnen muss. The door maker likes animals. He installs an animal door, so that the animal can come through the door without the door maker having to open the door for the animal. My last example for today is the difference between the long U sound in Uhr and the long O sound in Ohr. Ich habe eine Uhr in meinem Ohr. Das ist meine Ohrenuhr. I have a clock in my ear. This is my ear clock. Now it's your turn. Write your own sentences using Minima Para in the comments down below. I look forward to reading what you come up with. Das ist alles für heute. Danke fürs Zuschauen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss!